10 things to check before you even consider bringing in the damp man. At some point during your property investing career, during your property investment journey, you're gonna come across properties where you believe there is rising damp present. And that belief's gonna drive a certain type of action. Maybe you'll just become so full of fear that you do nothing and miss out on a perfectly good deal. Perhaps you've got no clue what to do and then don't do anything at all. Or you may have no idea what I'm talking about and just go ahead anyway, taking a massive chance. Now, of those things, all of all got one thing in common, and that is that they're all really shitty approaches. All the guys that have attended any one of my training programs and those that continue to invest in themselves and their education have got an approach. They know exactly what I'm talking about. They know exactly what to look out for when they go on those viewings so that they can stack their deal up properly. And they know exactly what to check before calling in the injection guns. my personal mission to transform the way that property investors operate inside the construction industry. I want to see you, the investor, go from learning and losses to wealth and profits. And I hope that this video goes some way towards helping you achieve that. So it's important to know that everything I'm gonna share with you in this video is only relevant, is only relative to solid wall housing stock. And here's a couple of ways that can help you identify whether that property is a solid wall or not. Number one, you need to measure the reveals. You can do this at doorways, you can do this at uh, window openings. And you're looking for a measurement around 215 to 225 millimeters. What I mean by that is the distance from the building's facade to the internal wall. And that measurement there, you're looking for around that number. That's a good indicator that this is a solid wall property. Number two is the building's age. If we're dealing with a, a pre-World War I stock, so early 1900s, these properties are really, really likely to be solid wall also. And number three, the big giveaway for me, is the uh, brick bond pattern. So when you see the brick bond pattern, if you're looking at solid wall property, you're likely gonna see headers in the building's facade. And what is a header? A header is the short face of the brick. The long face of a brick is known as a stretcher. The short face, the end, that's a header. If you can see rows and rows of headers, then that's also likely to be a solid wall property. Now, these are just guides. They're not a surefire, 100% guaranteed methodology of identifying a solid wall property. They're just good indicators to, for you to know whether that's the type that you're dealing with. So let's get into the 10 things, the 10 things that you can check before you call in the damp man. Number one, check the mastic seals around the windows externally. Externally, you'll find a mastic bead all the way around the window. You wanna be checking that that's not degraded. It's continuous, it's not got holes in it. It's not rotting. If that's the case, that would be the first thing I would be looking at. Number two, we're looking for the drip or the capillary groove on your window sills, where your window sill comes over and down. We're, we're looking for a drip underneath. What that does is stops water from tracking back towards the property on the underside of the sill and entering the property at that point. Number three, we're checking the condition of the guttering. As you look up at the guttering, can you see vegetation growing? Can you see grass growing over the tops? This can cause damp at a high level as it soddens the wall, as the water cascades over the top of the gutter and down the building's facade. Number four, the downpipes. The downpipes coming from the guttering, are they blocked? Are they cracked? Are they loose and wobbly as you grab them? Are they discharging water when it rains? If they're blocked, it's likely gonna create a backing up of water, backing up of the rainwater, up back again over the top of the guttering. Number five, check the external pointing of the property. What's pointing? Pointing is the joints in between the bricks, the horizontal joints, the bed joints, and then we've got the perp joints, which is the uprights, the verticals. We've gotta check the condition of those. Is it, is it all falling out? Is it crumbling? Has someone been and done some sort of repair using the wrong products? Make sure that the joints are full and in good condition. We don't have any moss or any greenery growing from those joints. Number six, we need to check that the property is well ventilated. 
and the heating system is being used. Number seven, we're now looking for non-breathable products that have been applied to the building over, its, over the years of it being used. We're looking for things like gypsum plasterboard being applied to the internal walls. We're looking for multi-skin finish that's been applied, plastic paints. We are looking for external cementitious renders that have been applied to the external wall of the building. Maybe a plastic paint's been applied directly to the brickwork or indeed on top of the render as well. All these things prevent the building from breathing. When the building's prevented from breathing, it gets choked. A moisture will build up inside the fabric of the building. Number eight, we're looking for the really obvious one, the leaking pipe. Looking, checking the condition and checking the uh, pipework in and around the area that you deem to be damp. Looking for radiator pipes, looking for any hot and cold feeds, any waste pipes even. Any pipes that are in and around the area, if they're rotten, degraded, got pinholes in them, just leaking, weeping, weeping dripping from the joints, anything like that could also create this um, illusion of rising damp occurring. Number nine, a blocked air brick. This one sounds really, really obvious, but there's so many times we've gone to properties like this and people have tried to prevent drafts, they've tried to prevent cold air from entering the property and they've siliconed up the air vents or they've stuffed it with newspaper. That's actually having a detrimental impact to the building. And number 10, we're looking for chimney breasts. Have the chimney breasts been capped at the top? and have they got a vent in at the bottom. If that area isn't allowing air to pass through it, it again will, it will create moisture inside the brickwork and you'll believe you have this, once again, phenomenon, um, fictitious rising damp. So before you call in the damp man to come and inject that cream cheese shite into your walls to treat a problem that's not there and doesn't exist, Check those 10 things first, and you'll likely find it to be one or more of those things before you start getting out the drill and drilling holes and injecting the cream cheese into your walls, applying tanking slurries, applying plastic sheets, applying bituminous paints that all have detrimental impact to the building's fabric and not a resolution to the problem that's not there. Now, if you want more content like this and you wanna hear more from me, hit that subscribe button, hit the like, hit the bell so that you're notified of every video that's gonna be posted upon here in the future. And if you wanna work with me even further, my website and email address is gonna be in the comments below.